Hi, my name is Joan Schnabel and we're here today with Raptology and we're very happy to be celebrating Earth Day with you. We have really missed doing bird programs in person, um, but we are glad to have this opportunity. And today what we're going to concentrate on, with the help of some of our birds and volunteers, is teaching you about the most common raptors in Iowa City and how you can start getting out and being able to identify them. So in the old days, the, ways that you, the way you identified a bird was to take your gun and go out and shoot it. This was great for bird identification for you, but not so good for the bird in question. Two things really changed this. One was the advent of better optics and cheaper optics, so you could take a pair of binoculars with you. And the other was at the advent of field guides, the earliest ones by Roger Torrey Peterson, and now there are many. This is my current favorite because it's portable, it's just on rafters, and it has great illustrations. Well, I'm Dawn, and I am here with my very good friend, Gonzo Turkey Vulture, and um, we are going to talk today about some ways that you can identify um, Iowa's two largest raptors while they are in flight. Um, but first, a little bit about Gonzo here. Um, he is um, a turkey vulture, as I said, um, very common to Iowa. Gonzo is what is referred to as human imprinted which means that um, he was picked up at a young age. He was found by um, some folks who um, were not sure of the story of his background, whether he was injured or orphaned. Um, he was taken to a rehab facility, and because vultures are so intelligent and so social, he um, imprinted on the humans that he was working with rather than um, understanding that he is a vulture. So. Um, Physically, there is nothing wrong with him. Um, he just is a little too used to being around humans. Um, when we take him and do programs um, outside sometimes, or even just sitting in the backyard here, if another vulture is around, um, he doesn't even acknowledge them. We are his flock. He thinks that he is one of us. The, the two that we're going to be talking about right now is um, turkey vultures and falling birds. <laughs> um, so before I talk about how they're different, I'm going to mention just a couple of ways um, that they are similar. Uh, the first being, as I already said, that they are both um, Iowa's largest raptors. Um, eagles are a little bit larger. Their wingspan can get up to about eight feet, uh, whereas turkey vultures, their wingspan is more in the six foot range. But during flight, it's kind of hard to tell the difference, especially if they're way up in the sky. Um, the other thing that they have in common is that they are both diurnal, so they're active during the day. Um, but besides that, um, there are some other things to consider when you're trying to identify a large raptor that you see in flight. Um, the first thing that's probably the easiest to consider is the season. Um, eagles are present in Iowa year-round. They are far more abundant in the wintertime. Whereas turkey vultures are um, on their way to South America around um, October, November. So if you are seeing a large bird between um, probably November and um, mid-March, um, chances are pretty good that you are seeing an eagle. Um, turkey vultures migrate to South America in the wintertime, not because they can't handle the cold, but because their food supply um, dwindles here. Um, if you think about what they eat, they are after um, dead things in nature, um, roadkill, things like that, um, that of course in the wintertime freeze very quickly, so um, they just don't have any food here. Um, okay, now we're going to talk about hawks. They're kind of two really different categories of hawks that you're going to see here. They're the buteos or buteos and the exhibitors. This is Sky. Sky is. Um, 13 years old. She's a red-tailed hawk. We have her because she has a busted right wing, which she got when she was very young. Um, you can see how solidly she's built. She has a white front. She has a belly band that goes through there. And you can see when you look at her from this side, you really can't see her beautiful red tail. So the occipiters that you're going to see here are Cooper's hawks. 
This is a wing from a Cooper's Hawk. This is the underside of the wing. This is a wing from a red tail hawk. And you can see it's much, much bigger and it's much, much broader. This is the underside of that wing. So size of the wing and shape of the wing will help you. This is the tail of a Cooper's hawk. Notice the stripes. The red tail has a red tail. Unless it's a first year bird, then it has a brown tail with thin black lines through it. Cooper's hawks are narrow, they have a long tail, and they eat birds. So if your backyard is really quiet and nobody's at the bird feeder, start looking for a Cooper's or a sharp shin. A sharp shin is basically a smaller version of a Cooper's. And if you can just identify it as either a Cooper's or a sharp shin, that's probably good enough for now. Exhibitors have a very distinct flight pattern. So when you see a bird and it's kind of got a long tail and is going flap, 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 glide, flap, 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 glide, you're probably seeing a Cooper's hawk. If you see a hawk with big wings and it's just lazily riding on the wind and soaring through the air or sitting perched on a pole by the highway or coming down on a rabbit or a squirrel, think red tail. So we're gonna talk about owls now. There are two large owls that are common in Eastern Iowa. This is our, um, how old are you? Nine, nine, nine year old great horned owl uh, named Reggie. She is an imprint and you can tell she is a great horned owl because she has, yeah, right, turn around. She has these horns on her head and they're not really horns, they are just feathers. And if you look at her, she has big yellow eyes. When this bird hoots, she goes, ho, 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 ho. And she also chitters and calls. The only bird that you're likely to get her mixed up with is a barred owl, not barn, barred. But barred owls have brown eyes and they don't have ear tufts. And they're the ones that always make a ruckus. They go, if you hear that, it's a barred owl. If you see yellow eyes and horns, it's a great one. Now we're going to talk about falcons. There really is only one falcon that you're most likely to see here in eastern Iowa, and that is a small bird called the American Kestrel. Uh, falcons in general flap a lot. They hardly ever glide. Kestrels can hover, with beating their wings and staying in one place. They're very colorful and they're noisy. They go kick, 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 when they're scolding you. And if you see a small raptor and it's sitting on the wire and its head is bobbing and its tail is bobbing, you are looking at a kestrel. So today we've tried to give you a brief survey of the common raptors that you're going to see around Iowa City. We've talked about plumage and ways to identify them. And we hope that you will go beyond just looking at plumage and look at other ways to, to learn about these birds. So for a brief summary, think about size. If it's big and it's black, your choices are turkey vulture, bald eagle. If it's, if it's big, but not that big, think about red tail hawk. Think about one of the owls. We've talked about great horned or barred. If it's kind of medium size, you might think about a Cooper's hawk. And if it's small, think about that little kestrel sitting on the wire. So you can use size as another way to start thinking about these birds. 
You can also use season. If it's January, it's probably not a turkey vulture. It's much more likely to be a bald eagle. If it's summer, there are some bald eagles here, but it's way more likely to be a turkey vulture. Think about flight style. So if it's got it, it's like this and it's dippy, think vulture. If it's like that and the wings are out straight, think bald eagle. If it's soaring in beautiful lazy circles around the sky, think a red tail. If it's flapping and gliding and flapping and gliding, think Cooper's hawk. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening to us. We hope this has helped you begin to learn how to identify the common raptors in Iowa. And so now what you need to do is get some binoculars and a parent or a friend and remember to keep you know, your six foot wingspan apart from each other and get out there and learn and enjoy these birds.